everyone, it's Deb from Deb's RV Services and welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna to talk all about the best RV that you can get for camping off-grid. I'm gonna to talk to you about what off-grid camping means. I'm gonna go into some of the components and things you wanna look for when you're looking for an RV. And then I'm gonna give you my opinion on what I feel the best RV out there is for off-grid camping. So first, what is off-grid camping? Off-grid camping can simply mean that you are self-sufficient, that you are camping out there without hookups. You are either camping on BLM land or maybe somebody's property. In either way, you are not in an RV park hooked up. You don't have electricity, you don't have access to sewer, and you are basically just out there on land and you have to be self-sufficient and rely on everything that you have in your RV to keep you going. So um, some people prefer to camp this way. I'm one of them. I really love being out there and finding land that is dispersed, that has a lot of space, where there's not a lot of people around. It really is good for saving money on um, RV spots, but it's also nice for people that just love nature. There's a lot of different reasons that people like to camp this way. So, so for some people it's money, for some people they are just really introverted and they wanna be alone. Now, although I like enjoy people and enjoy having my friendships, I really do love that feeling of being out in nature and not having a lot of people around me. And I wanna travel around the country this way. So I needed to find an RV that was going to accommodate me for that. So, and then there's a lot of people out there that work remotely and they can go anywhere they want. So they just follow the sun, they follow the temperature and they may wanna hop from place to place on free land where they can park. With having um, Starlink now, you can hook up and get connection for Wi-Fi basically anywhere. So there's a lot of reasons why people like to camp this way, but there's still people that really like the traditional RV camping at RV parks. They want all the hookups and there's nothing wrong with that either. But in this video, I'm really just kind of talking about those people that want to camp a different way. So the next thing I wanna talk about are, are things that you wanna look for uh, with an RV when you want to be a camper that is kind of off, that is off grid and neat, that is self-sufficient. So one of the first things that I look for is something that is more manual. When I say manual, I'm talking about you don't have all electronic components. When you get some of these newer RVs, they are making refrigerators 12 volt or residential. That sucks up power. They have a lot of the other components. The awning is electric. You have more slides on the RV and it's electric. Everything that you have that has a push button is that you know you use power is going to use up your electricity. So if you want to be off grid and you don't wanna to have to have a ginormous system in order to accommodate that, you wanna to try to get components that don't require as much electricity. So you may want to opt for a manual awning so that you don't have to use the 12 volt, but it's really not that much power while I'm using an awning and half the time a lot of these people don't use they're awning that much out in the BLM land because of the wind, um, but it is nice to have. You can also, with the refrigerators, when I've seen a lot of people when with these newer RVs and they have a 12 volt refrigerator and their battery's gone in two days. So if you have a good enough solar system, which we'll get into later, you can have a 12 volt refrigerator and then it can run off your batteries. So you've got to, you've, what you want to do is you want to consider what you can afford, what type of system you want to have as far as solar inverter battery, how much power will you have to run these systems? So the other thing that you want to look at is the type of um, solar system that you're going to have, which in my case, I have a smaller solar system, so I don't want a lot of electronic components on my RV. I don't have slides. I have a propane refrigerator. I have a propane stove. I have a large propane tank so that I can use those things. You want to look at the size of your water tank. You want to look at how much fresh water can I hold with this RV. For instance, my RV is a 60 gallon water tank. Other RVs could be as low as 20. 
And so if you get a tiny travel trailer, you could have a tiny fresh water tank, a tiny water heater, and a tiny refrigerator with just a little one cylinder propane tank. That's not gonna last you very long out there. You're gonna have to go refill and you're gonna have to dump. So there's all these things need to be considered when you want to be an off-grid person. So going more into that, I'm gonna give you my opinion on what I feel the best RV is, and that is an older motorhome. And this is my opinion. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that could, could say they, a travel trailer is best and it suits them the best. What suited me as a female and in my 50s is a motor home because I don't have to worry about the, the leveling of unhooking and hooking up uh, with a truck. I just prefer not to do that. Now I do tow a car but I find the car easier to detach and attach than I did when I had a travel trailer and sway bars and chains and all that stuff. So I feel like it's easier on my body to have a motorhome. You don't have to have a towable car with a motorhome. You can have a smaller motorhome and you just drive that. It depends on what you have going on. I work, I needed to have a towed. So. The other thing is, is that because I have an older motor home, I have one without slides. I have my lazy days. I love my lazy days. It's less maintenance. I don't have to use electronics to put slides in and out. It has a manual awning, so I'm not using power for that. I have a propane and 120 fridge, but I use it propane only because I am mainly off-grid. So I have a large propane tank with a motorhome, which most motorhomes do have, and then I just have to fill that tank every once in a while. But I, my furnace runs on propane, my water heater runs on propane. All of that runs on propane, so I rely on that, and I'm just very careful with how I use all of these things. Now, I also have a solar system, but it's very small. I have 400 watts of solar. I have a 2000 watt inverter and I only have two six volt batteries. They're AGM, so I don't have to maintain them. You could go larger, you could get you could get a bigger system. That way it could handle more electronic things. If you wanted to get a larger motorhome and a newer motorhome, just remember a lot of those, they, they come with induction burners. They're, they, the, the newer they are, the more electronic they are. They're becoming that way. So that's why I say a little bit older. Also remember, the larger the motor home you have, the less likely you are going to be able to get into these spots on BLM land. When I'm coming out, I'm always looking for spots that can handle a motor home or a larger, I look for things that say larger spaces available. Because I have a 26 and a half foot motor home, I, can get into most areas, but not as much as a van could, not as much as an off-road RV could. So if I had all the money in the world, I might get one of those really cool off-road um, motor homes that you know has a really high clearance. And that's the other thing you wanna think about. So I have a friend that I camp with. I have just a smidge more of clearance than she does, but every time we go through some of these washes and we go over bumps, she scrapes a little bit. So she would prefer to have something with a higher clearance. So there's all of these elements that you have to look at when you wanna be an off-grid person, if that's what you desire. You really want to take a look at what the, what the motor home or RV has to offer as far as electronics versus manual and propane. You wanna look at the size of the tanks. You wanna think about the type of solar system, if, if any, that you're gonna to have to keep your batteries going. If you choose not to have any solar, at least, then your batteries are gonna run out in a couple days. The other thing that I forgot to mention that I wanted, that's a biggie for why I choose a motorhome is that it has an onboard generator, usually. I have a generator and I can run my air conditioning if needed. I also have my generator for running on those cloudy days because even if you have solar, you are not always going to have sun that's gonna keep your batteries charged. So you may have to start your engine if you have 
the right charging system to charge your engine. You need to look at that too. Not every motor home has the DC to DC charger, which is that your alternator charges your batteries and your coach. So you might have a generator that charges your batteries and you might also have the DC to DC where when you're driving your motor home, your batteries are getting charged. Those are all things that you need to look at. So I hope that this gave you enough information on what to look for with when you're looking for something to have off grid as far as a motorhome versus a travel trailer, you know what I feel is best. But even if you are going the travel trailer route, you can still do that. You might just need to have, um, you might need to go into town more frequently just to change things out if you don't have a big enough say water supply tank there's just there's all kinds of um, ways to camp out here and I see all types of rigs and vans are wonderful too if you don't need the space so there's like I said it's my opinion that I really like having the motor home it's enough space for me but that's just me personally and you might like something that's even smaller you might enjoy a van you might enjoy towing if you already have a truck and you say, well, I could go get a little trailer. I used to have a tab trailer and I loved that thing. And that was a tab 320, but it has a really tiny, um, I think it was like 15 or 20 gallon fresh water tank. It's just not enough for what I do now, but they are super cute and they're made well. One more tip I want to give you is please be mindful on how the RV is made and really think about that when you're looking for either a travel trailer or motor home or van or whatever. I can't stress the importance of getting quality. If you are somebody that doesn't wanna repair things and or doesn't know how to repair things, you wanna find the best made RV out there. And I know I picked Lazy Days because they're made quality, but there's other RVs out there that are made very quality. Do the research, look into it. A lot of times it's the smaller places that are not in Elkhart and you can find those around the country and, and just get something that you can afford at an age that where it's been maintained, well cared for, and you will be all set. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little different than my inspection videos, but I want to do this every so often. I want to talk about other things and not just inspections. Comment below, ask any other questions that you have, and I will see you on the next one.